Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, peace be with you. I am Brother Nitya, a Capuchin priest, a Franciscan from Villupuram. I want to share with you some message about God's experience and our religious life for this day. I want to start with two three incidences, incidents that has happened in my life that I am touched very much. Once I was traveling in a taxi from my airport after my talk and going to my community, and it was midnight, two o'clock, and there was an elderly person who was driving, and then he was, I was just want casually started to giving a communication to with him so that he may not sleep. So it was a 20 minutes drive. And I asked him, my dear sir, it's very tough for you to drive at night. And he said, no, 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 it's very nice. I'm very happy because night there's no much traffic. I go home and I just do four times and I make a tour into shot. He said, I just make a four or five trips. Then I go home and sleep and get up in the morning and help my wife uh, a little time. Then I relax. And I said, what do you do rest of the day? And he said, sir, I have a busy schedule every day. Now, what is the busy schedule? He said, every day. I am spending four hours in the Word of God, Bible. I am an elderly person. I am a new convert from Hinduism. I became a Catholic, uh, Christian and uh, I have two daughters educated by one pastor. So for me, that work is uh, not there. I have got a rented house. I care for that and I help my family. I am living a happy life. Four hours every day. This is a time. This is a message for me very important. If a lay person can spend four hours per day for God, where am I? Who am I? What am I doing? Another one is one brother Leo and Assisi family apostolate. He is still in Madras, uh, Kalampakam nearby. He started a community. He was an engineer, professional engineer in the BHEL and he was, used to, to spend the time full moon day, new moon day in prayer and fasting with the whole family. Once he went he read this life of Francis of Assisi somewhere in a small prayer and he was edified by that. He was uh, sharing in his table, there was a Hindu a Brahmin who told him uh, this is uh, something about Francis of Assisi who lived like this. He didn't know much about it. From a Hindu Brahmin he learned. He said, oh my God, this is leaving everything following the gospel? Yes. Then he said, yes, if this is the thing I want to learn about him. He went and collected some 30 booklets about St. Francis of Assisi, he gave to all the friends. Then all of them became a followers of Francis, lay people, family people, married people, living their life, collecting all the money together, living in families in that particular thing. He resigned his job, got two acres of land, started Assisi family apostolate. That means the family people can live together, the first Christian life uh, following the footsteps of Francis of Assisi. They are still there. And the another one, a Businessmen's Fellowship India, this is a people who got converted to Christianity, who are running a business, who wants to follow a sincere life and never to stay dishonesty, never to be dishonest, but to hobby, always have a heart for the poor people. And those people give a witness and they come together once a month, every first Sunday. I used to gather and meet them. I was very much surprised to see how much they are able to spend time in prayer. All of them are business people and they want to share with each other, help each other to go forward with all these things. Business Men's Fellowship India, BFM, uh, BMFI. Another one is uh, uh, one dentist, uh, Peter, is um, in, 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 in near Mount Road in Chennai. So when I went to him, he was uh, some Pentecostal group, I think, and he was so happy to meet me. I said, come further, we are very happy, blessed all these places. And he removed the dentist chair. He said that uh, dental chairs, he said, these chairs will remove into my office. The whole dental uh, theater becomes our prayers, uh, prayers, um, prayer tent every Tuesday and Sunday. As what is that? He said Tuesday afternoon, half a day, and Sunday they always spend together in prayer. A dentist, he took me to the first floor. He asked me to bless this wall. It was just raised a fresh wall. And he said, what is it? He said, during my prayer, I heard the God's voice speaking to me. Why don't you, Peter, 
build a small house for the poor children. So he told me, he said from originally from Kerala, young fellow, he said, Father, Jesus told me to take care of the orphan boys, children, and I'll be taking care of the orphan boys on the first floor, and I don't have money, but whatever money I have got, I have saved and built, but God will give me. This is intimacy with God. All these four cases are connected to intimacy with God. Lay people, they are not religious. They are just family people. They are touched by God. They spend time for God. They listen to God's voice. They speak to God. They touch God. They feel touched by God. Yes, sisters and brothers, this is our inborn duty. To be in intimacy with God. Pope Francis uh, spoke about, when he spoke about this uh, year of the consecrated life, he spoke about how this in the beginning St. Anthony uh, the abbot left everything and went in search of God. So uh, being prophets uh, sometimes involves a making noise. They are not happy. They are not happy with the way things are done because every prophet feels an irritation with the worldly life and not, uh, not becoming part of this changing society's mindset, the way they behave, and they want to come away from that. This is some kind of um, uh, a, a prophet uh, making noise and uproar. Sometimes they create a mess. They say, this is not the world which I can live. So they wanted to announce, like Pope Francis says, it is like a yeast prophecy announces the spirit of the gospel. The first, in the beginning of history itself, we'll find how everybody was searching for God experience. The beginning, the first three centuries, the early experience, the suffering, time of suffering. After the third century, there was a freedom. What happened? Uh, once the freedom came to the church after Constantine the emperor, there became a lot of money, a lot of wealth, a lot of uh, uh, freedom was there, but the spirituality was coming less. It became an earnest religion. But there was what happened, there was uh, no prophetic uh, uh, lifestyle. With the, with the edict of Milan in the 3rd or 4th century, a new phase of Christianity began. Christianity became a state religion of Rome. Christians became privileged people. To be a Christian, not it was not a risk anymore, but it became a privilege. Change of perspective began. Institution set up began in the 4th century. The Christ-centered church became institution-centered church. Church became a, a bureaucratic. Lot of courts, lot of rituals, ceremonies. Challenge to the church to be a loving community of disciples of Christ was missing. Christianity was only in name. Christians, the Christianness was not in the essence. The Christ-likeness was missing. Again, this particular background emerged in an organized way to revive the heart of Christian call. Therefore, the desert fathers gave an inspiration. They entered into desert. They became in, in lonely. They wanted to spend time with God. The hermetic life of St. Anthony of Egypt inspired both solitary anchorites, that means flight from the world or withdrawal from the world. The later on became communities of Cenobites, which they lived in a community not in alone, alone. The radical form of Christianity is a prophetic uh, protest against the domestication of faith and the falsification of Christianity by the, after the Constantine establishment. By opting for the heroic form of seeking God alone in solitude and asceticism, religious people protested against what today Pope uh, Francis calls spiritual worldliness of Christianity. Later, religious life was identified with asceticism. Unfortunately, the message of protest against the domestication of faith was forgotten altogether, but the external form of religious life was reinforced. The Middle Age, during that time, there was established more stable, organized religious communities. The rule of St. Basil, the rule of St. Benedict, so it becomes uh, it was a, a icon of silent protest against the current atmosphere of early medieval Europe. With the environment of prayer, learning, hospitality, the, and the order, monastic life, 
offered an alternative to the world of ignorance, war and chaos. The world was living with a consumeristic culture, worldly life, materialistic life. The monastery started to give another culture, a counterculture. But later on, the same monastery became completely connected to big estates, richness, plenty of lands. So they also left away the original spirit of the counterculture to the worldly life. Later in the Middle Age, uh, later in the, with the rise of the middle class, a new form of religious life of mendicant order began. The Franciscans, Dominicans, Carmelites, Servites, all these uh, groups started to emerge. They dissociated with the land led wealth and feudal estates. They opted to have apostolic mobility rather than monastic stability. So this is again connected to God-centeredness. The gospel message of giving away everything to the poor was under specific focus. Lot of lay movements came up at this time. In the 16th century, there was a challenge of reformation groups against the corruption in the church. Hence, there emerged apostolic order like Jesuits. And in the early 19th century, there was a revival, restoration of rich tradition of consecrated life in the church. Late 19th century, there was a rise of a new forms of religious life by building a network of the church institutions for education, health care, social service. Remember, 19th century, and we are still continuing the same old things. And there emerged a growth of many apostolic congregations of religious men and women. Lot of religious congregations emerged 19th century. But what happened? Thanks to their consecration, they're eminently willing and free to leave everything and to go to proclaim the gospel even to the ends of the earth. They took care of education of the poorest people, the neglected people, the girl children. They took care of the widows, the orphans, and the rural people, the, uh, the refugees. And there was also a congregation where several congregations started to focus on the medical care, uh, health, health ministry. So their enterprising and their apostolate is often marked by originality, by a genius that demands admiration. Because at the, all the founders at that time, they had a vision to respond to the science of the times. They are generous. These are found at the outpost of mission and they take greatest risk of their life and their life and their very lives. Truly, church was the much. Evangelium Nuncian, the 69 says, the church is great, grateful to this particular congregation. Almost most of the congregations are because of them, the world has changed a lot. The care for the concern for the poor and the needy. Now, today's challenge. Though there is very good intention of upholding the gospel values and the protest against the domestication of faith by the establishment and society's insensitivity and callousness towards the underprivileged, many of such religious institutions today have come to serve exclusively the middle class. This is the period. They lost the original charism. Some of them spend much of their time and energy in creating and perpetuating elite institutions of excellence to attend to the needs of the rich, as though we are caretaker of the rich people. The ultimate purpose of my own religious life seems to be missing. Why I came to this religious life? Why I became a religious? A question, it's a questionable. I am doing what non-religious can do and are doing. Even family people can do the same type of teaching, education, social work and medical care. But what makes the difference? What is the thing that makes the difference? Am I doing what I am supposed to do as a religious? This is a question. Today's challenge, are we NGOs? For the beneficiaries, these harmless religious are paid for the service, service rendered like any other agencies. Yes, they are getting paid. The fact is that there's nothing Christian about it. There's nothing religious about it. 80 to 90 percent of all our activities are just what others are doing. Hence, is there anywhere connected to God? And some people begin to see such religious as new babysitters are the hired servant of the affluent. Most of the religious congregations in India, at least 65 to 70 percent, are fully involved 
in this work of babysitter's work and hired servants of affluent people. Of course, surely we are really committed. Lot of energy spent, lot of commitment, lot of sacrifice, but not to the target group. Here, the real agape is missing. We are losing our originality. Another challenge for religious today is the temptation to be somebody other than themselves. Almost all are doing the same work. Even if my whole congregation is lost, no one will be bothering. Institution, institutions after institutions, administrations after administrations. Yes, most of what we do, others are doing much better. Then why are we? This is the question. This is the status of most religious today. We grab everything except God. We have everything to give us identity except witnessing to God in our own day-to-day -day life. Each religious congregation is a gift of the Holy Spirit to the church. But usually we forgot our original charism, the vision of the founder or the founders, and take up what is convenient for us. Even though similar situations do exist, we select the comfortable lifestyle instead of the prophetic life witnessed by our forefathers, foremothers. Oftentimes, I forget the vision and the specific mission of my specific congregation. Many congregations do not spell out this even in the formation centers. Yes, dear sisters and brothers, my own personal experience, I have given several trainings to the formators, to the formies, to the novitiates, and to the higher-ups, to the juniors. In many places, I have come across with much difficulty, with much, with greater pain I have come across. They don't know why the congregation started. They don't know what was the dream of their founder or founders. They don't know what way it has to be interpreted today. This is not being taught. We are getting ready with the professionalism, getting professionals, not for speaking how to spend time with God. Therefore, we end up with some monetary activities for our maintenance, for our future. This way, we do not have time for God. This is the loss of religious life today. Religious life without God experience. Today, one can be successful as religious with high positions, in favorite places, with comfortable settings, and to get excellent name and fame. But all these are done without anything to do with the God experience. We do not decide the maturity of a religious by the secular success stories, but by the challenges and crosses that one bears by being a prophetic witness. To be effective prophets, our religious need to be persons of intimacy with the God. This is the core of our being, intimacy with the God. Who is my authority? Who leads me? Who pushes me to go ahead? Who pulls me back? Is it God? As someone else? Is it God or something else? Is it God or some other event? Today, they'll be taking up the mission, not of their choice, but that which comes from God himself. This is what is needed. What God wants me, I will take up. Not what I, what I will. My will and my God's will are always opposite to each other. Because I wish what I like, but God wants me to like something else, opposite to that. Religions are my means, but while spirituality is the end. I want to say a story, but I, I think it's a, a little time, but still I'll tell you. So, a mother uh, is sending the child, the child is very afraid, the small boy is unable to uh, run to this uh, particular cross the road and he says this uh, you know always the boy was running 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 so mother told hey don't go that side under that particular tree there is a ghost there and this boy was became very afraid whenever he looked at the tree he was afraid there was fever there was headache there was vomiting everywhere he said oh there's a ghost in the tree the ghost in the tree the mother says oh tie this particular thing this metal you tie, put in the neck, and always whenever you got a fear, you just hold on to that and speak to that. I am afraid God will save me, God will save me like that. Then you cross the road, cross the tree. Then the boy learned how to say some mantras. Then after she became all right. So what happened? Then what happened? 
for nothing this uh, uh, this uh, material was given to him in his uh, in his uh, uh, neck and for no that the, the boy was courageous the fear was induced when the fear was induced when there was a fear in the boy a materialism a ritualism was induced dear sisters and brothers we need to be very clear about what is religion what is spirituality we cling on to the religions and stay there instead of moving forward but uh, forget the spirituality which is the root we are satisfied with the expected recital of prayers rituals but stop going further to a spiritual experience to an intimacy with the god there's a very big difference between religiosity and spirituality where is god in my life the holy hour i have a daily meditation you know most of our congregation speaks about 30 minutes of mental prayer the constitution speaks most of us are feeling bored during this particular time they don't know what to do we cannot spend any number we can spend any number of hours reciting rosaries going for a divine uh, uh, divine mercy chaplets going for personal devotions and two hours of hallelujahs clapping hands singing dancing all those things are possible long hours of praise and worship but the noise 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 everywhere no time for personal union with the god it is a very very unfortunate that the even the catholic church there's very little for time for silence in the religious congress there's very little time for silence the early morning i have come across people start to saying rosary in public not silent no time for silence no time for intimacy with god even in the meditation time some kind of noise is there some kind of singing is there joy lives praise the lord all those things very very painful we are unable to sit for 30 full minutes in deep silence morning and in the evening we do not want to give quality time for god sometimes this is the best time for siesta without any disturbance often times meditations are utilized for programming for the next day reviewing the whole day planning for the next day the forgotten phone calls the problem with the persons the conflict the anxieties the tensions and sometimes we use this time of meditation to complete our rosaries divine chaplets all the personal devotions so that i will get a satisfaction it is a false satisfaction yes i completed today's quota is this spiritual life it's a very big question mark we can be in meditation in perfect harmony nobody knows everybody thinks i am meditating but i know my heart is far away from god filled with ritualism not going to the next stage i am not against rituals and other things but rituals are only means the end is god we are not going to god we start with rituals we end with rituals this is very pathetic in our religious life distinction between religious life focus on religion religious rules religious regulations many are good religious because they appear to be good they are very pleasing characters you know if anybody is very pleasing to character to everybody then it's a doubtful case so these people do not enter into troubles they always smile they do not open their mouth against anyone we are question mark big question mark what is the, what is in their mind spiritual life is very personal always led by god i and my god who is with me who is within me who decides my life who guides me religion is not just one there are many religions are there but the spirituality is one religions for those who needs someone to tell them what to do and what to be want to be guided spirituality is for those who pay attention to their inner voice where they listen to god's shrill voice religion has a set of dogmatic rules spirituality invites a reason about everything to question about everything and go deep into inner search one to one to grow into intimacy religion represses everything which is false spirituality spirituality transcends everything it brings you closer to your truth the absolute truth is god religion speaks of a god but it is not equal to god it is only leading you to god but spirituality is everything therefore god it is in god it is an experience religion invents religion does not tolerate any question but spirituality finds it searches again and again 
religion is human it is an organization with the rules made by men and women spirituality is divine without human rules it is mystical religion is the cause of divisions we know that spirituality always unites it transcends barriers religion is looking for you to believe it is external spirituality you have to look for it to believe it is internal religion follows the concept of sacred books spirituality seeks the sacred in all books religion feeds on fear and reward while spirituality feeds on trust and faith religion lives in thought spirituality lives in inner consciousness it needs time and constant effort religion deals with performing rituals pointed to places and things spirituality has to do with the inner self it is in spirit and truth as jesus told the samaritan woman religion feeds the ego i have done this and that i achieved so much spirituality drives to transcend beyond there is an opening for further more religion makes us renounce the world to follow spirituality makes us to live in god without renunciation but right in the midst of the world religious life religion is related to the rites and rituals customs and mores it is visible spirituality and inner search meditation it is an inner growth growth it is invisible religion fills us with the dreams of glory and paradise but spirituality makes us create a paradise on earth kingdom of god on earth thy will be done on earth religion lives in the past and in the future spirituality lives in the present here and now dear sisters and brothers this is something very important for us to reflect i want to add something more connected to just adding to what pope francis speaks about the people who are god's god men and god women this is what you and me are religious people you symbolize god to me i have to symbolize god in me in my life in my what i speak what i relate therefore the 10 symptoms 10 signs of god experienced persons they become gospel witness in their personal life second they become a living charism of the congregation if you want to know the congregation look at this particular person she or he is the symbol of the congregation the whole charism is in her in him third they become become the friend of the poor in any situation the heart is craving longing for the poorest of the poor that is the spirituality is growth in this found in this and it is part of the charism of every congregation fourth they become mission makers in any situation they create a new mission they devise they 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 create they initiate a new mission in any situation they become the credible human in society credible human being they become proactive persons in the community they will not be reactive but proactive they enter into solutions not the problem creator problem solvers they become prophetic citizens in any given situation they raise their prophetic voice when things go wrong when they go out of control when they go outside of god away from god eight they become pioneer with hope in god they become they take new ideas they initiate they initiate new life initiation of new lifestyle new vision they become pioneers nine they become collaborator for new initiatives of others they become collaborate they become volunteers they ready to do anything you will find how much people are ready to volunteer when things are asked in the community today very very difficult to get volunteers tenth one they become prayer through intimacy with god they don't recite the prayer they should they recite but they go beyond they become prayer is what actually francis francis was told that he was not praying anymore but prayer he became prayer himself there are also other signs which which we will come to know when they don't have experience with god signs signs of religious persons lacking god experience what are the signs first thing they crave for material welfare self they are self centered they avoid struggles they avoid challenges they are attached to persons power authority 
practically there is no sign of religiosity in them. They are just material people with the religious garb inside. Their friendship with the rich people in the society, seeking positions in the moneyed centers, rejecting poor and the downtrodden. It's another clear symptom of not having anything to do with the spiritual life. They are away from spirituality. They long to become superiors. They long to become procurator. They want to have a city in English medium schools. They want to principals or they want to be the uh, uh, whatever that correspondence. Different types. It can be anything. Longing, longing for power, money. Indirectly, they instigate others to get one's own goal, positions, elections, proposals, etc. They play politics. And other side of people who don't have a religious experience, but they are in religion, they don't have God experience, longing for popularity, appreciation from the higher ups, from the lower rooms, recognitions, institutions. Sixth one, creating divisions, part of the gangs, they become part of the gangs. They based on, or they may be connected to caste, language, region, attached to specific persons, they are uh, to specific things, to specific institutions and places. They are playing politics for the same. Comfort seeking life, grabbing, settled with the positions and money centers, city lifestyle, I already told. Just do what, then another group is passivity. Just do what is told and what is expected. Do the minimum, avoid the trouble, don't get into any difficulty, just relax and go away. Another character is jealousy, gossiping, non-cooperation for the common good, criticism and sarcasm. We come across people like this. No, no spiritual, there are lack of spirituality. Then people who don't have personal time with God, they are ready for community prayer, not for personal prayer, not spending time with God. No, it is not a sign of spirituality. They just live a routine life, satisfied with the minimum, following the community exercises. These are all not good signs. God experience in my personal life. Dear sisters and brothers, you know this Amos disciples, they said, they were, you know the whole story, at the end they are saying, did not our hearts burn within us when he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures, the burning of the heart. You feel it in your body, in your mind, in your heart, an excitement. This is an expression of God's experience. Prophet Elijah, he was sitting on the Mount Carmel. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah asking, Elijah, what are you doing here? What are you doing, Elijah? What made you to come here? Then Elijah is replying, the love for my God brought me here. The love for my God. Yes, sisters and brothers. The love for your God will bring you to closer to tabernacle, to the silence, to the woods, to the rooms, to the privacy, to spend time alone with God, alone. He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. Then he was waiting, waiting for the Lord. The Lord passed by. The strong wind came. God was not there. Break of the rocks. No, God was there. Then the earthquake was there, there was fire at the end, everything was there, but God was not found. He was waiting, waiting, waiting. He sensed it in the still small voice. Yes, sisters and brothers. If you want to feel the experience of God, he may speak to you in the still small voice. God becoming a deciding authority of my life. Ultimately, our religious life is a means to reach God. I came into this way of life not because of anyone or any other focus for my life, even though they could have played some role, but I came to be with him, to listen to his voice deep in my heart. It is he who brought me into this life. The key purpose is to be his witness on earth, to give others his voice on earth, to bear his eyes to see the people the world and everything through his eyes on earth. He wants to make the impossible possible through me and in me. This will lead me to Mount Tabor experience of exaltation or this transfiguration as well as the Calvary to give up the whole being to annihilation. 
my experience with God may be a later one and the other side a sacrificing one. My God experience leads me to say, I do not exist anymore, but God exists in me. This Jesus experienced and told, I and the Father are one. And he gives me the same power and energy to enter into the experience in my life moment by moment. Dear brothers and sisters, we are called to have this Abba experience moment by moment. It is he who is after you. It is he who is within you. Just close your eyes. Remember that he is there with you. It is just it's a question of few moments. You will get into that. The society demands from you a witness to the spiritual union with God. Are you a God person? Show it to me. I want a darshan of God in you. Are you ready for this? This is very important. God experience is my birthright. God's search is the non-negotiable obligation of my life. If I don't have search for God in my daily life, why am I living? If I am not experiencing God in my heart, where am I to go? All our activities and relationships and all our apostolates proceed from God and are led to God and are leading to God. Yes, it should come from God. If I am a teacher, may I be led by God to school. If I am a professional medical doctor, nurse or doctor, God is leading me to take care of the sick persons. If I am a social worker, God is leading me to the poor and the deprived. Yes. All my activities are led by God. I keep myself led by God and His holy will. I hear His words. I see Him face to face. I long for His voice and I hear Him. He suggests and He proposes. He seduces me. I make myself seduced by Him. That's what Jeremiah says. Then He demands me. I am unable to say no. I am filled with this mind and heart in whatever I do and say and whatever way I am. He becomes my everything. The world is dead to me. I get detached from my own kith and kin. I look at everyone without discrimination. There is no special choice in anybody, any people. I have no special friends. Everybody is equal to me. There is no distinction. And if at all, everyone becomes my father, mother and brother. If at all I am attached to anyone, it is with the last, the least and the lost. I am not having any pride over the friendship with the rich, but with the poor people, the beggars, the downtrodden, the migrants, the suffering ones. It is in them and in their uplift I see my involvement and in my mission. I find my charism, my charism of my congregation in this experience with God, in this intimacy with God. God becomes the deciding factor of my choices. My God becomes the deciding factor in all my activities. Every day he wakes me up, he leads me to sleep. I look at him and get his total energy and strength. My constitutional time of mental prayer and personal prayer and meditation in the morning and the evening becomes very essential for me. I long to spend this time with prayer. My meditation time looks very short. I get into an intensity of oneness with the God. I love to sustain in this experience. I do not want to end this time with the God. I, I love to stay with the God because He consoles my strength, uh, struggles. He, he wipes my tears. He encourages me to move forward. Everything is connected to my intimacy with God, my God experience. He strengthens in my failures, in my difficulties. He suits me up. He passes through my life and all my ups and downs in my life. Designing the will of God. I come across several conflicting emotions, situations. In all these, I consult God who resides in me. Whenever difference of opinions arise, I consult with my God who continues to speak to me. The ears of my heart is open to him always. I train myself to listen to God with all my self, self-sacrificing lifestyle. The will of God is not always pleasing for me, pleasing one for me. Yes, it is not always pleasing. Usually, it leads to a life of sacrifice, a life of martyrdom, a painful life of a prophet and the life of Pascal mystery that is a meaningful death. 
day and day out, day in and day out. With all my practice, I come to realize that God trains me to take a life of sacrifice. I have come here to offer myself to God. Behold, here I am, Lord, to do your will. Take me, do what you will. God's will is generally opposed to my whims and fancies. He chooses what I do not want. He, uh, I reject what I love most. This is a God experience. It is a sacrificial life that makes my religious life worthwhile. Dear friends, our source and our end is God. God himself, God has said, I am sorry to use the male language, but we take for granted. Very sorry about that. So God is a mother. God is a compassionate mother. God is a strengthening mother. God is the Holy One in me. God is the one who motivates me through the Holy Spirit. God is the one who appeared to me in the, in the sacrifice of Jesus and love. God is the most compassionate, who does not uh, to distinguish good and bad, who does not discriminate between the just and the unjust, like the rain he pours on everybody, like the sun he descends on everybody. It is you and me who are called to be gods on earth. For this, let us ask, where is God in my life? More than I search for God, he searches for me. It is he who called me, calls me every moment. Even if I go away from him, he comes after me. He has entered into my life through several instances. He has proved to me several times he cares for me. Even if I do not trust him, he continues to trust in me. Even if I do not love him, he loves me. Dear sisters and brothers, now let us practice a one month homework. What I want to give you is just 10 minutes per day, sit quietly in the presence of God. How to do it? Let's just skip an empty chair. It's a story, I don't, I don't have time now, but it's an empty chair. One friend was telling, how do you pray? Then another fellow was telling, hey, my dear man, the military people, they were telling, you see, whenever I have a difficulty, I left my family, I've left my children, wife, everybody far away. There's only one thing for me, my God. I hold on to him. How to do it? In my room, I keep an empty chair and I look at the chair and close the, my eyes and remember that I sit on my chair and look at this chair in front. It's an empty chair where God is sit sitting. Jesus is sitting in front of me. I go on speaking to him whatever that happened in my daily life. Whatever is my difficulty, whatever is my anxiety, whatever is my future plan, everything I speak, then I listen to him. I listen to his voice. I listen to his voice. Everything. My dear friend, if you want, pour out all your troubles, sit in front of empty chair, look at Jesus in front of you, and you will see all your troubles are removed. Have this intimacy with God every day. He will give you a solution to many things. And this particular, sisters and brothers, this particular story I told several congregations and this particular, several sisters have told me that has changed their entire life. In their room, they kept an empty chair. They start, start speaking only 10 minutes a day, just 10 minutes, pour out, speak in sound, let the sound come out of you. If they, you are in a common room, just make some particular place where you can sit all by yourself keep an empty chair or just keep on the on the uh, wall a face of Jesus, whatever you like most, maybe given mercy or sacred or Jesus or the Good Shepherd, whatever you like the most, keep there in front, just talk it, talk it out, talk it out. Very difficult to even to talk five minutes, just talk it. We should take talk five minutes, listen five minutes. He will speak to you. He will listen to you. He will respond to you. Anything that you want to take it up, speak it. Speak it out. Dear sisters, we have to practice intimacy with God. This intimacy will change your life. You will find today onwards you spend every 10, 10 minutes, whatever you do, that thing, rest of thing. Keep in your room an empty chair or a place of Jesus. Just speak from the depth of your heart. Whatever you want to speak it out, speak it out. 
you will find a marvelous change. And I've given you a guidance for your personal reflection and action. Today, whole day, you spend the time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. The question is for this, the paper will be distributed to you. Re-enter and experience deep within you three unforgettable experiences in your life in which you could sense God's interventions. Any three top most unforgettable experiences that really helped you to find God in your life. Remember it. And you will find what happened, where it happened, when it happened, who was there at that time, how it happened. Just enter into experience. Any three, one after three, or even one or two also enough. Then another question for your reflection is, three issues that block you to be cut off from God. What keeps you away from God? What keeps you away from yourself, from God, the inner self? The concrete step that you'll be taking to face each of these issues. What is the thing that keeps you away from God? You will realize. Three personal action plans that you plan from now on for deeper intimacy with God. How do you want to continue this deeper intimacy with God? Go into specifics. Where you want to do, when you want to do, what you want to do, with whom you want to do, how you want to do. All these things will help you, sisters. I wish you a wonderful month ahead. The whole month of July may be a miraculous month for you. Next month, we'll speak some other title. This month, spend completely in the union with God. The marvelous thing, you know from my number, any guidance, you can always contact me through the mobile number or through the email. I'm always at your disposal. Thank you very much. I pray for you. The rest of the day, spend in deep union with God. God loves you. God is with you. God is part of you. Dear sisters, dear brothers, you are part of the divine. There is a miracle in you. There is a holiness in you. Be happy and grateful to God. Never put down yourself because God never puts you down. You are a noble person. You are an important person. Maybe you may be feeling just your 20% is true. Yes, increase it. Make it 30, 40, 50, 90, 95, 98, 99, 100. 100 out of 100. You can become. The power is within you. The Holy Spirit is poured into our hearts. Thank you for your patient listening. Pray for me the whole month. Let it become a divine month for you. God bless you. May God bless you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.